What's cracking, y'all? You are now watching Boo TV. Appreciate you for stopping in. Like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell, stay notified, and let's get into the topic for today. How good was C Web really? C Web being Chris Weber. Shout out to Nocturnal Shutterbug. 1179 for recommending this video right on time because I had been wanting to do some Chris Weber content after I briefly mentioned him in a previous video. All right. I'm not going to make this long before we get into Johnny Arnett's video, but Chris Weber, listed at six foot 10, roughly 245 pounds, was drafted in 1993, first overall pick selected by the Orlando Magic, but traded to the Golden State Warriors for Penny Hardaway and three first round picks on draft night. C. Webb usually played the power forward position, but sometimes played small forward. Had a lengthy career from 93 to 2008 uh, with the Warriors, uh, Bullets slash Wizards, Sacramento Kings, Philadelphia 76ers, Detroit Pistons, and eventually found his way back to the Golden State Warriors. Now getting into some of his awards, accolades, etc. C. Webb is a five-time NBA All-Star, All-NBA first team once, uh, All-NBA second time, or second team three times, All-NBA third team once, NBA Rookie of the Year, All-Rookie first time, and was even uh, a rebounding leader. Fun fact, he had his uh, jersey retired by the Sacramento Kings, rightfully so, by the way, one of the best Kings players to ever play for the franchise. Believe it or not, Chris Webber is not on the NBA Top 75 list. I think that's a shame. I think that's a sin. But him and a couple other players that aren't on that list should definitely be on that list. Okay. Uh, Chris Weber on his career averaged almost 21 points per game on 17,182 points, 9.8 rebounds per game on 8,124 uh, points, 4.2 assists per game with 3,526 assists. Now, I just want to bring up that if it wasn't for Probably Chris Webber's last two seasons where obviously he was a shell of himself, way out of his prime, a absolute role player uh, with the Warriors and with the Detroit Pistons. He would, on his career, be averaging a 20 plus 10 rebound per game double-double on his career. Sometimes when these players stick around very long and become role players, it really hurts their averages, especially if they do it for a lengthy amount of time. But make no mistake about it, he's a 20 and 10 on his career. I don't give a damn what the stats say, okay? Chris Webber was extremely, extremely talented. Believe me when I tell you. I had to deal with Chris Webber as a Laker fan on a consistent basis, especially when he was on those Sacramento Kings teams. All right, Chris Webber. Hmm. C. Webb, I would say the prime of his career was probably his last handful of years, last couple years with the Wizards, on into his Sacramento years and through his Sacramento King years. He was probably in his prime then. C. Webb, like I said, you saw the numbers, 20, basically 20 and 10 on his career. So you better believe he had some 12, some 13 rebound seasons in there. And he even had like, I think he even averaged 27 points per game at least one year. Um, so the guy could get you buckets and could rebound. Now, it says that he only averaged four assists per game. I'll be the first to tell you that Chris Webber is one of the best passing bigs I have ever seen. Don't let the numbers confuse you. Four assists might not pop out at you. But when I tell you this guy is one of the most talented passers at his position you will ever see, please believe me. See, some players don't have this. They're not the hub, right? He wasn't the focal point. Everything didn't run through him. He wasn't monopolizing the ball uh, for better or for worse. But that wasn't how he was utilized. But Chris Weber could pass the basketball. I'm talking left hand. I'm talking right hand. I'm talking fancy stuff. I'm talking no look textbook, bounce passes, behind the back, shovel passes, no look. I seen him do it all, 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 man, I'm telling. So like I said, assist numbers might not jump up, but I promise you. And sometimes the good pass doesn't always lead to the assist. He was very well one of those hockey assist guys as well. He made the right play, man, I'm telling you, man. Go check out our Amazing Plays playlist. I got a play with C-Webb in there where he like threw the ball around the guy's head or something and then like, it, it's stupid, man. Stupid. Yeah, C-Webb. 
can really pass the ball. Fantastic rebounder, boxing out, big body, strong body. Uh, could use his feet, definitely was strong in the legs, knew how to utilize his legs when getting position against players. Um, and when you talk about scoring prowess, Chris Webber was a knockdown mid-range shooter. Could he extend to the three-point line? Yes, he could. Was it weaponized and utilized back then in his era? No, it wasn't. But I've seen him hit his fair share of threes. But I'm telling you, and plays, set plays for him in the mid-range, he was going to give you buckets. Also, Chris Webber could score in isolation and was a pretty damn good ball handler at his position as well. No problem. Chris Webber could play in the post, back to the basket, uh, good at utilizing both hands, had a nice little baby hook and a nice little fadeaway that he could go to. Chris Webber was an all-around basketball player. I don't care what numbers or anybody else tell you. Listen to what I'm telling you, folks. Chris Webb uh, was that dude. And especially playing with those Sacramento Kings teams, that team gave us nightmares, and Chris Webber was one of the reasons why. All right? I'm done here. Johnny Arnett, take it away. When people talk about the great power forwards of the early 2000s, three all-time great names usually come up, as they should. Tim Duncan, Kevin Garnett, and Dirk Nowitzki. But one player who rarely gets mentioned who was competing at that elite level at that same position was the all-star Chris Webber, who for a variety of reasons gets overlooked among the great forwards of that era. Today, we're evaluating the legacy, talent, and overall career of Chris Webber, and we'll start as we always do by taking it back to the beginning of his career. Chris was drafted with the first overall pick in the 1993 NBA draft by the Orlando Magic, but was then immediately traded to the Golden State Warriors for Penny Hardaway and three future first round picks. His talent earned him the first selection as he was a quality scorer, a solid ball handler, and could rebound with the best of them. And those skills translated extremely well to the NBA level. With Weber added to the starting lineup, the Warriors became a winning team once again, on their way to the NBA playoffs. They went 50-32 and 32 throughout the regular season, and Weber was named that season's Rookie of the Year, with averages of 17.5 points, 9.1 rebounds, 3.6 assists, and 2.2 blocks on 55.2% shooting. It was a strong first season that ultimately ended in a sweep to the defending Western Conference champions, the Phoenix Suns. Despite quickly approaching star status with his significant impact, not all was well within the Golden State organization. Head coach of the Warriors Don Nelson and Weber butted heads. Nelson had a history of coaching small ball lineups, so Nelson naturally moved the 6'9 Weber to the center position, which was a position Weber wasn't very comfortable playing. With Chris's ball handling skills, he wanted to be involved in the offense in more ways than simply standing in the paint and waiting for the ball to be dumped down to him. The issues left Weber wanting out of the situation, so he exercised his one-year escape clause, and the Warriors agreed to a sign-in trade that sent him to the Washington Bullets. The Bullets were a team devoid of talent, and Chris would be a major addition in that aspect. But even though he would put up nice numbers in his first two seasons with the team, he also did it in limited time, as he dealt with significant injuries, playing in only 69 out of the 164 games. It wasn't until his third season with Washington that Weber had a healthy season and broke out as an all-star. He averaged 20.1 points, 10.3 rebounds, 4.6 assists, and 1.9 blocks on 51.8% shooting. This was good enough to lead them to a 44-38 record and the 8th seed in the playoffs before they were eliminated by Jordan and the Bulls. Thanks to Weber, this was Washington's first playoff appearance in nine seasons. By the summer of 1998, Weber had established himself as one of the better power forwards the league had to offer. But after failing once again to make a deep postseason run, Washington was ready to commit to a full rebuild and traded Weber to a place where he would settle down and enjoy the prime of his career, the Sacramento Kings. With additional acquisitions of Peja Stojakovic, Vladi Divac, and Jason Williams, Sacramento was quickly building themselves a contender in the Western Conference. Weber would continue to improve his game as he led the league in rebounds in 1999 with 13 per game, which ended Dennis Rodman's streak of seven straight seasons as the rebounding champion. 
Chris's prime season came in the 2000 to 2001 campaign, where the 27 year old put up 27.1 points, 11.1 rebounds, 4.2 assists, and 1.7 blocks on 48.1% shooting. At this point, Weber was legitimately in the conversation of being the best power forward in the entire league. His 27.1 points per game is a higher average than Tim Duncan, Kevin Garnett, or Dirk Nowitzki have ever achieved. With these incredible numbers, Weber led Sacramento to a 55-27 season as he finished fourth overall in the league MVP race. They would go on to lose in the playoffs to Shaq and Kobe's Lakers for the second straight season, as their rivalry was continuing to heat up. But the following season appeared to be Weber's and the Sacramento Kings' year. As a Lakers fan who hates to admit this, I can say that the 2002 Kings had a beautiful and unselfish style of team basketball as they had seven players who averaged double-digit scoring over the course of the season. Weber once again did his part, as he put up solid numbers throughout the season, leading the Kings to a 61-21 and record, which was easily the best record in franchise history. After handily beating the Utah Jazz and the Dallas Mavericks in the first two rounds, the stage was set for the game's biggest rivals to square off for the third straight season. Lakers, Kings, best of seven. At this point, everyone who followed the NBA closely knew that this was the real NBA championship. Yes. The Western Conference was superior in talent to the Eastern Conference, and it didn't matter who represented the East in the finals. Both the Lakers and the Kings would destroy them. Over the series, <laughs> Weber did lead the Kings in turnovers and made several crucial blunders in critical moments, which I'll touch on more later. But overall, he had a monster series, putting up strong all-around numbers. This would be a classic seven game series for the ages, but unfortunately, it may also be the most controversial series of NBA history. Yes. The Lakers would win this series in overtime of the seventh game, but many people think it shouldn't have even got to that point. Sacramento was leading the series three games to two when game six had numerous questionable calls throughout the game that was going almost entirely in the Lakers' favor. It seemed just like bad refereeing at the time, but it turns out it was probably much more than just that. Years later, NBA referee Tim Donaghy was convicted and sent to prison for illegal gambling, as he bet on NBA games that he refereed. Donaghy has since said that the league had an agenda to have the Lakers win Game 6. Whether or not you believe this statement is up to you. Based on this information, Chris Webber should be an NBA champion, and be known as the man who is the best player on the team that ended the Shaq and Kobe dynasty. This is another reason why Chris Webber's legacy is overlooked although I don't think it should be. In my opinion, he deserves to have a ring, and he deserves to be in the Hall of Fame. After this point, Weber would continue to be an effective and elite player for several years, but he would begin to deal with more and more injuries and would never quite get as close to the mountaintop as he did with the Kings in 2002. He closed out his career playing with Philadelphia, Detroit, and the Golden State Warriors. Looking at the totality of his career, Weber was a five-time All-Star, he made five All-NBA teams, was the 1994 Rookie of the Year, and was the 1999 Rebounding Champion. Overall, he was a solid scorer, could bang down low, but also had a quality mid-range jumper. He was a terrific rebounder, and was one of the best passing big men of his era. In my opinion, Weber had the perfect storm of circumstances for being a great player who gets overlooked in history. For one, he should have been an NBA champion, but he wasn't. Second, he was a bit of a journeyman who spent the majority of his career playing for less prestigious teams. And three, he didn't play long enough to rank very high on the all-time lists. Not everything about Weber's game was fantastic, though. He was a player who was known to make many crucial errors and mistakes when it counted. After all, one of his most famous plays of his career was actually from his college days with the Michigan Wolverines, when he called a timeout in the final moments when his team didn't have any. This resulted in a technical foul, possession going to North Carolina, and ultimately caused his team to lose the national championship game. Some of these mental lapses continued into his basketball career, as he made many costly turnovers, like I alluded to from the 2002 West Finals. And I even remember an instance in the playoffs where he already had a technical foul and was visibly upset and nearly got ejected by picking up his second one when Kobe Bryant tried to calm him down so that he could stay in the game. That's right. His opponent tried to get him to keep his cool so that he could remain in the game for what was, at the time, the biggest game of his life. Regardless of his judgment issues in key moments, Weber was still an overall all-time great at his position. He had a higher career scoring average than Tim Duncan and Kevin Garnett, and he had a higher assist per game average than Duncan, Garnett, and Dirk Nowitzki. 
I wouldn't rank him higher on the all-time list than Duncan, Dirk, or Garnett, but at the very least, he belongs in that class of great big men. Let me know in the comments section if you think Chris Webber deserves to be in the Hall of Fame, and does he deserve an NBA championship ring? Thanks for watching as always, make sure to like and subscribe for more basketball content, and I'll see you guys in the next video. <laughs> hey man, uh, listen, I love my 2002 NBA championship, but that whole that whole thing in the Western Conference Finals was, was horrible, and you know, I can't even argue that there were times in that series where I really thought the Lakers were going to lose. Hell, the the game where Robert Ory hit the big shot, that, that, that was all luck, man. Like, we, we could have easily been down 3-1 in that series. I think we tied it 2-2 with the big big shot Rob shot that Vladi Divac tipped out in Staples. I think that tied the series. We would have been down 3-1. Uh, and... Throughout most of that series, I felt like we, the Lakers, were were outmatched, man. I, I did. Chris Webber very well should be a champion. I have, in an alternate universe, it happened, I suppose. But and I like that tidbit about Kobe. He's like the fact that you know you got a lot of players now that try to get. Players ejected a lot. Try to get under their skin and get them to get technical. Get them to get technical fouls. Uh, LeBron James will do that a lot, like to Draymond Green or whoever else. But I love the fact that Kobe's com competitive nature is like I know I want to keep you in the game. I want to beat y'all at y'all best. Don't get ejected. I love that. I love that. Hey man, Johnny Arnett reiterated some of the stuff I already said and then shed some more light on Chris Webber's career that, you know, I didn't touch on. So, and you, you saw the passes he was doing. I ain't making this up. Y'all saw the passes in this video, man. See, Webb could pass the ball. But all those reasons that he brought up about why he gets overlooked, those are all accurate. Johnny Arnett nailed it. He really did. Y'all let me know what you think about it. You remember C. Webb? What'd you think of him? Do you agree with me and Johnny? Love to hear your opinion. Like, comment, subscribe, hit that bell, stay notified, folks, and I will catch you on the next one. We out, baby.